Good morning. This is Ed Zakora, Extension Plant Pathologist. Uh, today we're going to talk about taproot decline, which is a new soil, soil-borne fungal disease of soybeans. Uh, taproot decline is an uh, emerging disease. We've we picked it up in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Arkansas over the last few years. We confirmed it in Alabama last year uh, for the first time, but I have observed symptoms of this pathogen or this disease in fields in previous years in the state. The disease is caused by a previously undescribed fungal species in the genus Xylaria, uh, so a new pathogen for soybeans. These are some slides I took up at the Tennessee Valley Research Station last August. This is out of someone's Kathy Glass's variety trial, but you can just see some general yelling of the plants in the field. And these symptoms can be confused with a number of other diseases, such as sudden death syndrome, uh, charcoal rot, southern blight, and so on but just a general yellow decline of the plant. So foliar symptoms, uh, as I said, can be confused with other soil-borne diseases, most likely sudden death, charcoal rot, southern blight, uh, stem canker, maybe even uh, some uh, herbicide injury problems. Uh, you'll see a mild intervenal chlorosis or yellowing. Uh, this is often common on leaves of infected plants. You, leaves exhibiting this intervenal chlorosis will develop in the mid canopy prior to bloom, which is a little uh, different from some of the other soil borne diseases that show up later in the season. Uh, you will see a leaf yellowing visible in the upper canopy at full pod, uh, stages R5, R6, late in the season. These, this yellow flag is what you normally pick out when you're scouting a field. Uh, the best way to uh, confirmed taproot decline is by looking at the base of the plants, looking at the blackened roots. And oftentimes when you try and pull one of these plants out of the ground, it'll snap off right at the soil line, right at the taproot. And if you look at the base, you'll see a black discoloration, which is pretty characteristic for this pathogen. Uh, on these images, you can see some of the confusion you might have in the field among the different diseases. I have a, I've been confused for the last couple of years on this subject, but you can see taproot decline developing in the bottom left corner. Intervenal yellowing with eventual necrosis or browning of the tissue. Uh, you compare that to sudden death syndrome, SDS in the bottom right. Pretty much similar symptoms. Uh, top right corner, you have some, uh, actually that's a fungicide damage on soybeans with the intervenal yellowing and browning. And upper left is soybean vein necrosis virus, also a relatively new disease in Alabama. And with that disease, you can get yellow spotting and eventual necrosis or browning between the tissue. So taproot decline, not that easy to differentiate from some of these other pathogens. Uh, what you'll see in the field, usually by, by pod fill, is just yellow plants in the field, uh, flagging of individual plants, maybe one or two plants in a, in a row, uh, but not a dramatic field pattern, such as coming in from the edge, say with charcoal rot or big round circles. These plants are often scattered, and you might find two or three plants together in a row. When you look more closely at the plants, uh, if you get down in your hands and knees and look down, you'll find one or two plants yellowing up. Oftentimes, right next to these, you might find one or two dead plants that succumb to the disease earlier in the season. And then you also have this intervenal yellowing or chlorosis, necrosis. And as I said, can be confused with a number of other diseases. Now with taproot decline, you can see disease, disease earlier in the season, uh, even before bloom. And if you look at the leaves on the left, some of that intervenal yellowing there can be confused with something like uh, iron, uh, iron deficiency or magnesium. Uh, so it can come in early and take those plants out early as well. But oftentimes this goes unnoticed by the farmer. I hear symptoms on the cotyledon, so. But I've often seen that as looking like uh, abiotic, like damage from wind or, or, or blowing soil. Most, uh, I want to say dramatic, but most, uh, the symptom you really want to look for to confirm it is this black stromata at the base of the plant. In the bottom right corner, you can see this black lesion uh, base at the, at the soil line on the plant. Uh, on top there, you can see the black, the brown stuff is just soil adhering to the soil surface, but that's the fungal body. That's a sign of the pathogen. That's the actual fungal stromata. 
And again, when you pull these plants from the soil, they'll just snap off very easily at the soil line. One thing I'll be looking for this year, and I haven't seen this in the past, is, is uh, dead man's fingers or devil's horns. These are these, these white structures coming from the stromata uh, at near the soil line or at the base of the plant. And again, this is just a sign of the pathogen that you have it. Something I'll be looking for this year. What we'll do oftentimes in the lab, but you could also see this in the field, is when you remove those plants from the ground and, and cut the stem open longitudinally just above the soil line, you'll see a white cottony growth within the pith. And this could separate it from, say, internal symptoms of sudden death syndrome, which causes more of a water soaking on the lower vascular system without the white cottony growth. So at this time, we're surveying the state to determine disease distribution, started this last year. Uh, however, we're also working with pathologists at Mississippi State University and LSU, as well as other institutions in the Southeast, to determine the best management practices for this pathogen. Right now, research in the South uh, will focus on identifying varietal resistance to taproot decline, fungicide effectiveness, uh, crop rotation and tillage options, identifying alternative hosts for the pathogen, and also estimate yield loss to this disease. That does it cause, is it a significant problem that we have to address? Uh, last slide here, just a distribution map where we detected taproot decline last year in the state. I think we picked it up in roughly eight counties. And I, I did notice in a couple counties in, in the Black Belt in West Alabama, in Hale, Green, Pickens, and Sumter, I was not able to find a disease, but this just might have been due to field conditions or uh, certain varieties. But I think we'll find it more and more as we uh, canvas the state for taproot decline. Uh, so with that, if anyone has any questions on the disease, please contact me uh, by phone or by email, and I'll be happy to talk about it further. Thank you.